Hi, I'm Robert Ote. I'm here at the Pond Research Institute in La Junta, Colorado. I'm talking to Dale Pond about sympathetic vibratory physics. And uh, the first question I'd like to ask you, Dale, is um, what are the similarities between Walter Russell's work and the work of John Keeley? Uh, that's a big question. There, there are a number of similarities. Um, I found over the years that when you're studying Keeley, there's a lot of holes because we don't have his original research. All we have are newspaper articles and magazine articles. And so that his science was never really presented to the world that we could get a handle on it. And, it. and as I studied Russell, a similar thing occurred. You know, he did lots of images and, and he wrote lots of books, but there were inconsistencies and there were gaping holes in it. And, but I found out that Keeley would fill in a hole in Russell, and Russell would fill in holes in, in Keeley. Um, one of the commonalities is they both talk about, Russell talks about love being the basis of the universe, of universal action. And Keeley talked about sympathetic vibration being the basis of all activity in the universe. Well, if you have two tuning forks in perfect harmony with each other, isn't that another definition of love? They resonate. So sy sympathetic vibration is just mm -hmm. a fancy word for love. Mm -hmm. And if we take the physics view, like Keeley did, mm -hmm. then um, it, w we set aside the, the words that have connotations like the word love. People, have, people react to that word in all different kinds of ways. But the scientific term, sympathetic vibration, mm -hmm. everybody can kind of get a handle on that and they can understand it and they don't react and they don't run away from it and they're not afraid. <coughs> Other concepts are, are uh, for instance, Russell talked a lot about God, mm -hmm. which is another red flag for a lot of people. And uh, Keeley never really talked about God, but he did mention him quite often in his writings. And in his scientific terms, uh, Keeley took uh, science and metaphysics and philosophy and religion and he divorced all those terms from it and turned it into a science. So he didn't use those terms in describing his work. For instance, the, the God mind, he classified as a type of energy and matter, which he called compound interetheric. Mm -hmm. And uh, below that was an interetheric energy, which is a different sort of mind force, mm -hmm. subset. So they're all talking about the same things. They're using two different approaches, two different contexts, and it, it, uh, it is beautiful when you start to see how they fit together. They're both describing this incredible universe filled with life and continuity and rhythms. And, uh, so basically this is about the wave mechanics of love then. Yeah, you could kind of say it that way. <laughs> it's. Uh, yeah, because it's a vibratory universe. Mm -hmm. Everything vibrates. Right. So if we discover and study the physics of those mm -hmm. vibrations, then we get a much better handle on what's right. going on, and we're not left with words like spirit or God <coughs> or love, which mm -hmm. have no scientific basis. Right. <coughs> we can, however, step aside and say, okay, we can extrapolate these concepts into scientific terms. And sympathetic vibration is a, is a scientific term. Right. It's been used for hundreds of years in, in music and whatnot. And nowadays they're trying to relabel it and call it quantum entanglement. Mm -hmm. Same phenomena, same process, the same thing, uh, only in a different level of matter and energy. Mm -hmm. Then you start getting into the mind forces, which are all sympathetic. They're totally sympathetic. Um, which brings which us is to the back question. To love. You bring right, love. Back to love. And where does that love come from? It's it's a, it's a virtue or an attribute of sympathy, as in sympathetic vibrations. It doesn't come from someplace. It is everywhere, mm -hmm. all the time. A sympathy, a sympathy between centers or between seemingly separate objects, but they're all connected with this sympathy. Mm -hmm. Another word for love. It doesn't come from anywhere. It mm -hmm. just is. Right. Omniscient, omnipresent, <laughs> and omnipotent. <laughs> That's the God force, by right. the way. Right. When everything is in total sympathy, mm -hmm. total love, total oneness, mm -hmm. that's the definition of God. 
Right. So we don't have to use those religious terms that mm -hmm. uh, people fight over. Just say, no, everything is in perfect sympathy. Right. The anthropomorphic gods of religions yeah, have nothing they, to do with this. Yeah, people like to personify things. Mm -hmm. You know, they see these forces or these phenomena and they'll give them names so that mm -hmm. they because they didn't have any science thousands of years ago. So they had these phenomena that they saw, anomalies, and they said, oh, that must be a god that did that, or an angel did that, or, or spirit did that. <clears throat> when today we can, we can sit back comfortably and say, no, we understand the dynamics, the physics behind these phenomena. What was to them a miracle is to us simple cause and effect. Right. And we don't have to resort to the basic practice of superstition was just to label something we don't understand mm -hmm. and then deal with the label. Right. We want to understand the cause of the things that we experience. Not just the effects we see. Right. Yeah.